It's a pretty exciting time for us at Research Solutions, and we're happy to have you along. We recently acquired Resolute AI and have added two new products to our product family, Nebula and Foundation. These aren't just any products, they're built with some pretty impressive AI technology that's going to change the game in research. To give you a first-hand experience, we've included a live demonstration in today's agenda. We'll also discuss our future plans, elaborating on how these new additions will blend with our current offerings to revolutionize the research process. Also hang out um, until the end because we'll having a live Q&A session to address any questions that you might have. Um, and you see on the little Zoom bar below, if you click on Q&A, you can add your questions there as soon as they come up. Um, and then of course, we'll have dedicated time to answer them. Um, so feel free to add them so you don't actually forget about it. Okay, uh, let me introduce our panelists. As the Chief Product Officer at Research Solutions, Michael van der Heiden is a seasoned executive with a track record in product technology, product development, and business development. Before joining us, Mikael held high-ranking positions at Springer Nature, a prominent publisher, where he mastered his skills for nearly a decade. Previously, he served as head of product management at Elsevier and also counts with startup experience. Uh, Steve Goldstein has been an information industry executive for over 30 years. Prior to joining Resolute AI in 2019 as the CEO, he worked at Thomson Reuters. Prior to that, he was the co-founder and CEO of Allegra, a business and financial information service he sold in 2015. Welcome to this webinar, Mikhail and Steve. Thank you. Uh, also, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Julia Heeson, and I'll be guiding our conversation today as your moderator. Um, so yeah, a little bit about Research Solutions, if you're not familiar with us yet. Um, founded in 2006, Research Solutions has been on a mission to simplify and streamline how organizations discover, acquire, and manage scientific articles and data. With a suite of innovative products, we're empowering researchers worldwide and transforming the way scientific information is accessed and utilized. As you know, we're here today because of our recent acquisition of Resident AI, an advanced search platform aimed at equipping organizations with search, discovery, analysis, and knowledge management tools powered by AI and NLP technologies. Now, with that being said, let me hand it over to our Chief Product Officer, Mikael. Yeah, thank you, Julia. Um, yeah, indeed, uh, exciting times. Um, we're very pleased with uh, you know joining forces with Resolute uh, AI, and to kind of explain you a bit why that is the case is is why we have this slide here. Right, you might know research solutions, you know, because you're, you're familiar with with Article Galaxy, which is our document delivery uh, platform. But our whole kind of strategy is to facilitate many more steps in the innovation journey. And to do so, we have released uh, Article Galaxy references uh, over a year ago, because that is, you know, tapping into the, the step uh, after you have um, had a document delivered to you, right? That is where you can annotate and, and, and collaborate on, 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 on content, on, on scientific articles. Uh, we also have added uh, Cure Data to our portfolio uh, last year. That is a more in the the, the review uh, area, the, the regulatory domain for the medical device manufacturers. But really, you know, a big step forward is with both Foundation and Nebula, the tools that Steve will demo in uh, in a minute, and this will allow us to you know also cover the search and the search and discovery a part of the innovation journey and that was definitely you know not a the, the strongest uh, element of, of uh, article galaxy so far so i think with the addition of those two search tools we really you know create a more end-to-end -end solution so that is you know why we are so enthusiastic about this uh, this acquisition um but more details uh later in the in the in the presentation I first like to hand over to uh, Steve for a live demo. So I will stop sharing and hand over to Steve. Okay, thanks, Mikael. Um, see if I can get the sharing working here. Um, okay, I think I've got it. Uh, Okay, well, um, Julia, Mikel, thanks very much. Um, 
Uh, again, I'm Steve Goldstein. I'm the CEO of Resolute AI. I'm going to give you an overview of the Resolute AI platform and its capabilities. I'm going to go pretty quickly and at a very high level. There are parts of the platform I could easily spend a half hour or 45 minutes on, but I'm going to try to do both products and the entire platform in about 25 minutes. Um, we'll take questions at the end, but if there's anything that catches your eye, we'll be happy to set up a separate meeting to discuss with you at a later time. Um, the first thing I'm going to demonstrate is Foundation, which is our scientific research platform. Uh, and then I'm going to demonstrate Nebula, which is our enterprise search service. Uh, I'm going to um, demonstrate, I'm not going to demonstrate a particular use case, um, but the main use cases for our products are in research and development, white space analysis, competitive intelligence, post-market surveillance, uh, and innovation and business development. Um, so as Mikhail referenced, we, we start at the innovation stage and then we can go um, and provide information and research tools all the way to post-market surveillance. Okay. Um, I'm gonna be highlighting a number of capabilities and benefits of the service, um, federated searching across internal and external databases, uh, our tagging engine. So we tag all our content with both our proprietary tagging engine and then a number of um, industry specific taxonomies and ontologies. Um, I'm gonna show you some of our analytics very briefly. And we have a number of chat GPT integrations, which I will also be demonstrating. Uh, I'm gonna be using a life sciences example, but our platform is also used by companies in consumer products and automotive, oil and gas and consulting and venture capital. So pretty much anywhere where there is a need for scientific research or a product is based on some science, uh, Foundation and Nebula can provide tremendous value. Okay, so um, with that as the introduction, let's get started. Uh, we need to start somewhere. I'm going to start in our publications database. Um, publications includes uh, Crossref, PubMed, IEEE, and a number of preprint servers. And we've got about 163 million individual pieces of content. Uh, the, um, the first thing I'm gonna do is type in a natural language search query. Um, use of Botox for the treatment of migraines is gonna be the search I'm gonna be using throughout. Uh, if I click here, we're going to send that search up to ChatGPT, and it's going to do a semantic expansion of the natural language query that I entered. Uh, and it's going to create this Boolean string down below um, so that the user can find easily synonyms and other terms that might be included um, in what they're looking for without having to know every single term. All right. Um, and so from my 163 million results, um, I've gotten it down to about 3,000, which is also a lot. Let me tell you first what's going on on the screen here. So um, we have a number of different types of searching that you can deploy. Um, I've used an advanced search. There's a basic term search, and we also have a document search where you can put in a paragraph and we'll find other documents that are similar to the paragraph that you entered. Um, there's a bunch of different ways that you can sort by relevance, by date, things like that. There are ways to export the metadata for your results. Um, you can create an alert, um, determine the frequency that you want to be alerted on a given topic. Uh, and then there's the capability to use ChatGPT to summarize um, one or many of your search results. And I'm going to show you an example of that a little later. Uh, the other feature that's seen here is the ability to create and add to a collection. I'm gonna show you how this works later, but basically it allows you to um, check off search results that might be of interest um, at a later date or that you might wanna share with your colleagues uh, and then send them a link to that collection. And then I'm also gonna show you later on a, uh, a report that can be generated from a collection using ChatGPT. Okay. So that's the UI that happens in the center of the screen here. Um, for each result, um, you get basically a snippet. Um, you can see how this particular article was tagged, where it came from, some information about the authors, 
um, and information about um, where it was published in the DOI, okay? Um, this is um, still too many results for me, and I have the ability um, using the left-hand navigation to um, reduce the set of results to something that's more uh, manageable. And so we have the ability to search by tags and categories, um, we can search by source or filter by source, um, forward references. Um, we have the ability to see articles that meet um, a certain, that are tagged with a certain ontology or taxonomy. Um, so we have Medra, MESH, RX, NORM, and ICD-10. Uh, what I'm going to do is just sort by, um, I'm gonna sort by, um, things that are matching to chronic migraine in Medra. And that's gonna give me um, 646 results. Um, and I'm going to pick um, just one of them at random. Uh, and then the results come back where you get an abstract in the center of the screen. Uh, on the right-hand side are some of the highlights, okay? So um, these are all the tags um, for this particular article. These are the authors, um, what journal it came from, publication date, uh, and then we have links out to external resources. So you can go to PubMed, you can get the DOI, or you can access this article through Reprints Desk if you have a subscription or you wanna purchase it on a one-off basis, okay? So that's what happens on the right-hand side of the screen. Uh, on the left-hand side of the screen, um, you get some more information about the publisher. Uh, I'm gonna do some chatting with AI in a minute. Um, you get more information about the authors, um, all the tags um, that we've used to tag this particular article. Uh, and then I mentioned the ontologies that we're using. So these are the measure terms that we found, uh, the mesh terms, Rx norm terms, and ICD-10 terms. So pretty much any set of data that we get, we can tag in a wide number of ways using a large number of taxonomies so that you can drill down and filter on the um, information that is most relevant to your search query, okay? So I'm going to now jump from publications and I wanna go see um, patents in this particular area. So we're gonna run my search um, and hopefully in a couple of seconds, we'll come back with patents. Um, and there are 803 patents that meet my criteria. Um, results are coming back now, okay? And as you can see, it's very similar to the results screen that we had for publications in that we get a, um, we get a snippet um, in the center and then more specific patent-oriented metadata below, okay? Uh, one thing we also tag our content with is PubChem. So if there is a, um, if there are chemicals mentioned, we'll let you know what they are. And then if you hover over a particular chemical, we'll go out to PubChem and get you information about that chemical compound. Okay. Um, so if we drill into one of these patents, um, I can go here. Um, and I can see the description, the claims, the inventors, the assignees, so on and so forth. Um, and then I can have this patent sent up to ChatGPT so I can get a summary of the patent. And this can take anywhere from a few seconds, which I'm hoping it'll take in a live demo, to, um, to several seconds. Um, but it'll take only this particular patent, and it will send it to ChatGPT and get a summary. Okay as it's done here, okay? Um, this is important because when we, um, when we do the summarization, we are only asking it to summarize information that we've sent it, and it is not using the chat GPT corpus, so we can um, dramatically reduce or eliminate um, the possibility of hallucinations, okay? All right, so I've shown you, um, I've shown you basically how to do a search of publications and patents. What I'd like to do now quickly is to go to analytics, okay? Um, so I've got my search query here. I'm gonna do some analysis of these patents. Um, the default analytic in Resolute is a, um, it's a heat map, um, which you can see here. 
Um, I, we have a bunch of other chart types though. So area charts, saying key diagrams, tree maps, other kinds of bar charts, okay, that you can use, but I'm just gonna use the heat map for now. Uh, and I am going to change this around. So I've got assignees listed. I wonder who the assignees are on this patent, on these patents. Uh, and then I'm gonna also find the tags, okay? And so it's gonna create a heat map um, of all the assignees um, and all the tags for these patents that have been um, awarded to these particular companies, okay? And so um, I can see Ibsen Biopharm has got a number of patents having to do with the treatment of Botox, the use of Botox for the treatments of migraines. And then if I was interested in seeing the patent that mentioned tryptophan as one of the, um, as one of the tags, I can click there and it's going to bring me back to that particular patent. Okay. Um, and so using the heat map and using the other visualizations and analytics that are available on foundation, you can analyze and visualize large quantities of unstructured information. Uh, and then you can drill down to the piece of information that might be most valuable to you. Okay. All right, so I'm going to um, move along and do the same search now in clinical trials, okay? So I've got my clinical trials database up. Um, you can see it in the top left-hand corner. I've pre-typed in use of Botox in the treatment of migraines. And it's gonna take my 530,000 clinical trials and it's gonna reduce it to just a few thousand, okay? I'm sorry, just a few hundred, so 471, excuse me. Okay, so um, much like with um, publications and patents, um, the center of the screen gives you some basic information or metadata about each particular clinical trial um, with the tags listed here, um, who sponsored the clinical trial, who the principal investigator was, so on and so forth. Uh, and then there are ways to also filter clinical trials just like you could filter patents or publications. So you can go by sponsor name or by the organization type or um, who the principal investigator was, so on and so forth, okay? What I'm gonna do though is I'm going to look for clinical trials um, that had to do with the use of Botox for the treatment of migraines. And I wanna see um, which of these have been cited in the academic literature. And um, I'm gonna reduce um, the number of publications I have that the number of trials that have publications to 108. And I wanna see, for example, um, any clinical trial that had between four and eight publications that signed it, okay? And so um, I've applied these filters. And I've got 20 results, okay? Um, and so I'm looking for a particular result for the purposes of this demonstration. Um, and so I've got this particular result, the effect of multimodal physical therapy in migraine, okay? Now, again, I can click here and I can get um, the abstract, the description, um, eligibility information, enrollment information, um, if there are any adverse events, information on the principal investigator, so on and so forth. Um, and on the right-hand side, much the same, you get highlights, all the tags um, and high-level information. Where I wanna jump to here is our knowledge graph application, which we call Connect and Discover. So um, how I got here was Resolute, whenever possible, if there are two data sets um, that can be connected together easily, um, we will do that. Um, and there is a regular need for customers, for our customers and our users to find and analyze academic literature that cites a particular clinical trial to help develop a future clinical trial or just to do basic research on the results of a trial, okay? And so in the center um, is the clinical trial that I had selected um, in the sort of yellowish brown color. Um, in the teal color, there are um, publications that cite that particular clinical trial. Um, and in the green are people who authored um, some of those publications. 
Okay. And so um, this can be expanded. Um, if I wanted to see Lars Benson's other information, I could go see if he had any patents, if he had been a principal investigator of another clinical trial, if he had written some other articles. Um, and as you might be aware, knowledge graphs are often um, challenging to navigate. Um, and so what we do at the bottom is we provide you a list of clinical trial and the articles that cite it, which can then be um, exported to Excel, okay? Um, and so there's a little Excel button in the top hand right where you can get this information and if you'd like, include it in a collection. Um, I've chosen to look at the published research, but there's another button you can press here to find, okay, so this is the clinical trial. Um, this was the sponsor, Neuromed IRCS. This is where the trial took place. Um, and Armando Parada was the principal investigator, okay? And so if Armando um, had been involved um, with other publications or clinical trials, I could expand out to there and I could find out more about Armando, okay? All right, um, I know I'm going very quickly. Um, hopefully if there are questions, you will save them for the Q&A. Um, the next thing I'm going to talk about is the Resolute Research Network, okay? Um, I'm gonna click here. We had a number of customers uh, ask us if we could help with the identification of subject matter experts and key opinion leaders. Um, and so what the Resolute Research Network is, it's a database of about 78 million scientists that we have extracted from three of the databases, um, the three databases that I've just shown you. So all the authors from publications, all the inventors from patents, and all the principal investigators from our clinical trials database. Um, and so let's say that we um, were looking for a principal investigator or subject matter expert on the subject that we've been talking about. The use of Botox for the treatment of migraines. Okay. So I'm going to do that query and expand it um, using chat GPT as I did before. Uh, I'm going to do my search. And it turns out that we've got um, 71 people who have met my criteria. Okay. And so the role I'm looking for is that of principal investigator. Um, so I'm going to add this filter that I'm looking specifically for principal investigators. Um, and then what I want to do is I want to find the person who's done um, the most clinical trials as a principal investigator. And I come up with a fellow named Roger Cady. So I'm going to click on Roger. Okay. And I get information on the 14 clinical trials that Roger has worked on. Okay. What I can also do here is I can take these 14 clinical trials that Roger's been the principal investigator from, and I can hit the summary button, and we're gonna take this information, send it up to ChatGPT, and in a few seconds, we are gonna get a biography of Roger Caden, okay? And tell you what he is an expert in based upon the clinical trials for which he has been a principal investigator. And so when looking for a subject matter expert or a key opinion leader or a principal investigator, um, we're providing a way for the user to um, take a tremendous amount of information, filter down to just the type of person they might be looking for, and then compare summaries of the works of that person um, so they can get a better idea who they should be interviewing or who they should be talking to. Um, with regard to their need for, in this case, a principal investigator, okay? All right, so I have um, one more thing to show in foundation, and then I'm going to uh, move over to Nebula. So early on, I mentioned this concept of collections, where um, a user can um, create a group of documents and save them and then share them with colleagues. Um, they can be colleagues within their organization, or they can be colleagues or partners outside the organization. And so you can see I've got a number of different collections I've done here. 
But I did set one up earlier for Botox for the treatment of chronic migraine, okay? And so um, a collection looks like this. Um, you get metadata and a synopsis of what you've put into the collection on the right-hand side. This collection has five articles, three patents, and three companies from Crunchbase. Um, and the user has the ability to fill in what's on the left-hand side with a title and an annotation or a summary or something like that. And I've done that for the first two entries in this collection. Um, but on the right-hand side in the navigation, you can edit or delete or resume or reorder everything. And so you could type something in here, okay? And then the other tremendous benefit that we provide with collections is that we can create a technology landscape report out of information that we've put into a collection. Uh, and so what we do is we take all the records that you've selected, um, we package them up with a number of different uh, prompts for ChatGPT, um, and then in a few minutes, you can then get what we call a technology research report that looks something like this, okay? So I've asked ChatGPT to take the documents um, that I had collected in my collection. Um, Resolute AI has built a number of prompts. Um, and then we get a nicely formatted draft of a technology landscape report that has an executive summary, um, an introduction, some information about the methodology, um, an industry overview, some of the technology categories that the companies that I mentioned are work working in, um, some technology profiles, um, a market analysis, impact on industry, a conclusion, and then links back to all the documents that I used to create this report. So a, um, a process that might have taken many hours or even days to get to a first draft of a technology landscape report can be done on Resolute AI in a matter of minutes. And really that, um, that took me about 15 minutes to put together, okay? So just to sum up on Foundation, um, Foundation is a scientific research platform. I demonstrated um, three databases, patents, clinical trials, and publications, um, with a, throwing in a few crunch-based companies here at the bottom of this report. Um, but there are a number of other databases that are available, um, including a grants database, technology transfer database, which is used to look for business partners, we have a news database uh, and we have a number of databases from the US Food and Drug Administration that are used for pharmacovigilance and post-market surveillance. So the product can be used uh, both in the beginning of the innovation cycle for white space analysis. Um, are there any new use cases for Botox in the treatment of migraines? Because I think I have one. All the way to post market surveillance to see if there are any problems with any of the Botox product, products that are being used to treat migraines. Okay. okay, so I'm going to shift gear slightly now to Nebula. Um, so, the origin of Nebula is that customers saw the um, interesting, beneficial, useful, and valuable things we were able to do with the largely public domain databases that are available in Foundation. And they said, wouldn't it be great if we could add all that value to our own proprietary research products that sit behind our firewall? Uh, and that is how Nebula was born. So basically, we ingest content from our customers uh, it is usually, but not exclusively, coming from uh, SharePoint Drive or Drives. Um, there's a well-known anecdote um, that SharePoint is where information goes to die, uh, and that is the problem that we're trying to solve. Um, so we take our customer SharePoint information, we do um, indexing and tagging of it, uh, and then I'm going to demonstrate some of the other um, AI uh, processes that we add value that we use to add value to these documents. Uh, I'm going to show you um, image recognition, uh, OCR, and transcription. Okay. Um, 
Since um, I really can't demonstrate anything using a customer's proprietary data, but I have a couple of other data sets that work well for uh, demonstration purposes. So first, what I'm going to do is we have a collection of about 9,700 articles from ACS, okay, from American Chemical Society. And I am going to do a search for these for looking for wavelength and nanometers is my search. Okay. Um, and I'm going to do that search. Uh, and it's going to come back and tell me that there were 3,500 results. Um, what I'm really interested, though, is I'm interested in finding um, there's a chart that I remember having seen in one of these articles. And I just want to filter on all the articles um, in this that meet my search criteria that have an XY plot. Okay. And so what we do is we take all the data that comes to us. Um, in this case, it's a bunch of PDFs. Um, and we do image recognition on every page in the PDF, okay, to look for XY plots, okay? Um, and so I have this result here where um, at the top of the screen, there are a number of XY plots. Um, and once we do the image recognition, then we do optical character recognition on the letters or words that are labels in the plot. And you can see that I was able to pick up wavelength and nanometers as the x-axis in these particular plots. So if you've ever had the experience where you had some very valuable data that you put together in a chart and then put it into a PowerPoint deck and then filed away the PowerPoint deck, um, we're able to look through all your PowerPoints um, and find the chart that you're looking for just based upon the label of the X or Y axis by using a combination of image recognition and OCR. Okay. Um, to demonstrate this again, I've got a um, I've got a number of articles from Article Galaxy. Okay. And so uh, I'm going to do my query is going to be um, biodiversity. Okay in these articles. And um, it's going to go off and do that search. Uh, but what I really want to find is I want to find um, results that have a map that mention biodiversity. Okay, And so um, there's one, um, and I found it. And if I click here, you will see that at the top, there are a number of maps um, of the United States. Okay, and then in the legend on the right hand side, um, there's RFB resilience flow and recognized biodiversity. So we've done image recognition on this particular document um, to find things like maps or tables or XY plots. Um, and then we do OCR to find the labels or the legend so that um, the valuable information that's included in something that's um, non textual can be readily found, okay? Okay, so my last example is going to show um, what we do with video, okay? And so we have a nebula demonstration set that includes um, eight documents or videos. Um, I'm going to uh, look for my co-panelist's name, Mikel, um, and see in these eight documents or videos, um, what I can find. Um, and there is a picture of Mikael um, in a video, okay? And so if I click here, I'm gonna get the video. And what we do is we provide transcription below the video, okay? And so if I click here in some part of the transcription, it's gonna take me to that spot in the video where the speakers are mentioning what I was looking for. Springer Nature. Mikhail has a ton of experience in the field of scientific publishing. In fact, prior to his current role. Okay, so there's a picture of Mikhail. I was able to um, find his name in the transcription, uh, and then I can click into the transcription to find um, where the term I was looking for is mentioned. Okay. In addition to doing transcription, we do image recognition on all the frames in the video. Uh, and then we can we do OCR on those images as well. So that if, for example, you were looking at a TED talk um, and the speaker had 
put a chart up on the screen, we'd be able to find that chart in the video. And a simple example of this is um, we can click on vision. And if I want to find where the computer keyboard is in the video, um, I can click there and I found the first instance of a computer keyboard. Okay. So um, to sum up Nebula, it is an enterprise search platform. It has been developed um, specifically with scientific information in mind that can be um, processed regardless of type of format. So it can be um, documents, it could be embedded documents where a PDF is embedded in another PDF. It could be PowerPoint, it could be audio, it could be video, it could be charts and tables, it could be pretty much anything um, and we'd be able to find it for you. Um, this is being used um, in a number of pharmaceutical companies, oil and gas companies, um, other life sciences companies um, for things like identifying terms and charts and scan lab notebooks, um, keeping video content for key opinion leader interviews, and overall research of archival information um, that typically gets put to a share point never to be seen again. Um, and that concludes my very fast demonstration of both Foundation and Nebula. I'm going to turn it back over to Julia and Mikel. You, Steve. Let me start sharing my screen again. All good. Thumbs up. You see my screen? Come on, beautiful. Well, thanks, Steve. Yeah. Um, this is now the, the the first time I see you giving this demo, but it keeps on being a very impressive uh, demo, actually. And I hope you know that is what also what we try to get across that that you know we are very pleased that we now you know have have all of these capabilities uh, as part of the uh, the research solutions family. Let me click here, because. What I would like to kind of repeat a bit is, you know, what we like to accomplish with all of that. Huh? What, what is our mission? And we want to empower research intensive organization to accelerate innovation. That's, of course, a lot of buzzwords, uh, I realize. But what the Resolute technology and data stack actually will allow us is to facilitate many more uh, steps in the innovation process from innovation strategy to R&D to post-development. So that's really what we try to do, to, to kind of build solutions that provide professionals in, in this domain with the right information at the right time, uh, ideally in a, in a very modular way. So, what is the problem that we're solving? Because it, if if yeah, I'm I'm in in product, so you typically try to solve problems because you know that that has a, a value exchange in it. And if you go back to the the core of what we try to solve is information overload. Information overload. I think you all will you know agree that in this era, you know the, the amount of information that we consume on a daily basis is enormous and it is the amount of of information and content that is you know at your fingertips is enormous and to actually be sure that you're not missing on anything and that you have a good grip on what is happening in your field that is you know what what we have heard over and over again one of the biggest um yeah, problems that that professionals as well as in the corporate as in the academic domain are are facing on a on a day to day basis almost. So that is you know where we think these kind of solutions can uh, play an important role or making the lives of these professionals a bit easier. Um, that also brings me to you know why Resolute. Uh, you know what what are the synergies between Resolute AI and and research solutions. There is there's a quite a, a list of of these synergies to to mention, but let me pick some of them in particular. I think first and foremost, we we really try to um, 
we have a similar kind of a customer group, right? That also Resolute is really looking for the research intense uh, organizations. Uh, we see that from a technology point of view, we share a similar, um, you know, mindset. Um, and what we saw with Resolute in particular is that it will add an awful lot more data sets to, to our portfolio that are, you know, in need in that innovation uh, process. So these were kind of the, the, the reasons why we thought, you know, working with Resolute is a very a big step forward for us. And to kind of build on what Steve already mentioned in his, his presentation, what is the core of the, 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 the value of both foundation as well as Nebula is the, let's say the, the relational aspect and, and you know the graph database to that extent. The ability to connect um, information across these data sets you know, to us is at the core of its value because it allows the both foundation and nebula to identify uh, concepts you know scientific concepts and and how they relate to each other so that is yeah what what makes this an extremely powerful uh, solution um also, the, you know, the, the use of natural language processing and machine learning and these large language models, all the, 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 the buzzwords or terms around artificial intelligence are, of course, in this mix as well. But the essence is that, you know, the ability to use all of that in making information uh, or translating information into insights and, and providing it uh, uh, at the right time. Uh, for the, the the right use case, and just another slide, kind of trying to explain this, and this is just more of a an, 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 an knowledge graph uh, example from you know a recent uh, event in our uh, in our in everybody's lives here. The, this is the illustration of uh, how Michael uh, Houghton, the the you know, Bell Prize winner, and Part of the team that worked on the on the COVID vaccine, you know how his he as a person relates to his co-authors to the the, the kind of the, the the publications that he has uh, worked on and how that relates to chemical compounds and so on and so on. Right. So th this is really what you can um, a what you can visualize, but also how you can use this as a way to. Uh, explore in an enormous amount of information. Um, so what is the actual opportunity at hand? Um, what we're trying to do with, you know, the, 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 the joint forces between Resolute and uh, Research Solutions is to understand the innovation value chain and to create information rich products for the specific personas and specific use cases in this you know, innovation domain and this is you know where we have broken it down by the three steps like strategy r d and post market communication if you focus on the life sciences you can you know, add a fourth column here which is clinical development but the key is that we want to you know start building solutions for um, multiple departments and personas in, in this chain. Um, and we started, you know, with literature access that was Article Galaxy. We kind of extended that, but now with Resolute on board, we can obviously tap into many more of these uh, steps in the process. Um, so to kind of give you a bit of an overview on how our roadmap looks like. This is, you know, what we want to do on, on very short notice, right? This is basically where we are today. There is Resolute with Foundation and Nebula, and we have Article Galaxy references and Cure Data. Um, first and foremost, what we, what we are already working on, obviously, is make sure that if you are a Foundation uh, user, 
that it will be very easy to uh, order documents as that is often you know a, a kind of final step in your journey you find a scientific article and you want to have access to it so that is something that we want to facilitate in a very easy way on the other hand what we want to do with article galaxy which lacks a proper search uh, engine is use the foundation and nebula technology to uh, enhance the search capabilities of um, of article galaxy at the same time we also going to connect cure data and the post-market surveillance search capabilities of foundation and make that an integrated uh, solution for the regulatory uh, intensive uh, industries later on i'm not going to go into too much detail because that will take too long you know we want to build more you know, specific applications for the the specific user journeys and, and and tasks within the information process next to that of course we want to really build on the ai capabilities that we are start that we have started to create within art for galaxy but also now of course in addition the um, the ai capabilities that uh, that resolute brings to us and this is just a quick snapshot on what is going to be released uh, on short notice is the AI um, functionality uh, in Article Galaxy. We're going to do a better job in uh, recommendation. If you find a specific article, uh, we want to point you to other articles that might be of interest to you as well not so much based on citations, but more based on what is actually the content of that uh, article. And of course, you know, all of that will be done in a copyright compliance way, because we do know that there is uh, quite a bit of pressure on, on, on that in that domain, especially, you know, where Elsevier has made very clear that they don't want anybody, including us, to uh, use um, content that is behind the paywall to actually feed into uh, these AI driven engines. So we are, we stay compliant in, in that way. Um, at the same time, well, as I mentioned, you know, we're going to improve search on Article Galaxy uh, and do a way better job in, uh, you know, finding and discovering articles as part of your uh, Article Galaxy journey. And we also are working with the foundation team to build some very task specific applications um, in the technology landscape uh, is is a module that we're going to create where you you can actually do a you know technology landscape uh, create a technology landscape report we want to create a specific tool for the clinical trial um, part of the innovation process also competitive intelligence, the competitive landscape is a module that we're gonna create. And uh, yeah, what we have called the key opinion leader finder. So we learned that, and we know that, you know, finding somebody to, to collaborate with, finding your next hire, um, that is an important uh, task in, in many steps of the innovation workflow. And obviously with all the data sets that we, that we, that are included in foundation, to have a tool that is specific for this task is uh, what we are gonna build next. So that brings me at the end of my story, which hence makes me hand over to uh, Julia again. Yes, well, thank you so much, Mikael, for giving that future outlook and also Steve for showing us Nebula and Faye Foundation firsthand. It's always nice to actually get to see um, the product um, and the interface. Um, so yeah, if you liked what you saw so far and you'd like a more in-depth demonstration, you know, as Steve mentioned, um, he tried to make this, you know, work on a webinar format where we don't spend um, a complete hour per product. But of course, if you have specific questions with like a more personal demo, um, I'm adding a link in the chat here right now where you can definitely um, schedule it. If you fill out the form on that link, um, you'll get the option to directly book a, book a meeting, um, different time slots that fit your calendar, or if you prefer being contacted via email, you can of course um, add that in the comment section and we'll make sure to reach out to you. 
Now let's get started with the live Q&A. If you haven't ad added any questions, you can still do so as they come up. Um, I do see a few here. Um, so the first question is, is there a free trial for Nebula or Foundation? Yeah, so there's, um, we do free trials for Foundation. Uh, in return for a free, free trial, we ask that you give us some um, time to train you on the platform so you get the most out of the free trial. Uh, and Nebula, we have pilot programs which are cost effective, but since there's a lot of work on our side to get a Nebula trial in place, there is a modest charge to um, have a Nebula trial. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, the next question is, do the research solutions for products like Article Galaxy come with AI functionality? Yeah, let me take that. Um, yes, so what was shown on one of the slides is our uh, AI and chat GTP uh, kind of integration, which is going to be released in uh, in the next month. So in, in I think in, in a week or two. Um, Forgive me, I don't have the exact date, but it's it's coming soon. So that that will you know we build on as I mentioned the the kind of a recommendation engine, a uh, ability to summarize or to point you to um, articles from uh, the, the the same um, author or or to kind of you know the, give a a snapshot on the the findings in the in the article. So there's a whole bunch of AI driven. Uh, solutions that we're gonna gonna um, release. Uh, we are building on that for quite some time, but we want to really make sure that we you know do it right and that we just not you know trying to jump on the on the on the hype. So we first released it with a whole bun a bunch of uh, development partners and and test it and got feedback and and now we are we're comfortable in releasing it to uh, to the majority of our uh, of our customers. So yes. It's a short answer. <laughs> long, a long answer short. Thank you so much, Mikael. Um, and then for what it seems like the last question right now, as I see, is I'm a current Article Galaxy customer. Who do I best reach out to to get more information on foundation? Um, let me take that. Yeah, so if you know who your account manager is, you can send um, your account manager an email directly. Um, if you're not sure how that is, you just know that you use Article Galaxy. You can use that same link that I sent in the chat and it'll automatically connect you with your um, account manager and then we'll pull in someone um, most appropriate to actually showcase um, yeah, foundation yet again, uh, maybe even Steve. So you'll get another one-on-one -on -one call with him. <laughs> but yes, great question. Okay, well, it looks like we've got all the questions answered. If any questions come up afterwards, you can still reach out via email or over our website contact form, and then we'd be happy to um, take it offline. Thank you so much for joining today. Thank you so much, Mikael and Steve. And um, yeah, see you around. Thanks, Julia. Thanks, Mikael.